Whew, just look at that foliage color get better and better and better. Man, how am I doing this? I'm just using the opacity slider. During my critique sessions on F64 Elite, every time I see a foliage image, there's something that it's missing. And it's typically a color separation between greens and yellows. And it's one of the most complicated and difficult things to do in either Photoshop or Lightroom, especially because we're not really looking for it, right? We're typically looking at what the camera gives us and saying, this is what foliage looks like. But how many times have you been to something like the Pacific Northwest in Olympic National Park and seen these just outlandishly beautiful green colors right in front of you. But then you take a picture of it and you look at it and it's just not the same. But then someone said, oh, don't hike up the saturation slider because then your image is gonna look like crap. So you're like, oh, well, I guess I just have crap foliage. Well, that's not necessarily the case. There's a tool in Photoshop called the Selective Color Adjustment Layer, and we're gonna use that to amplify the foliage in our images. Now, I've got a couple test images here that I'm gonna be using for this. We're gonna break down the selective color so you know exactly what's happening with this, and I've got some actions for you. But I do not want you to download these actions now. I want you to wait until this video is over to download these actions because I need you to know what's happening in the background. So let's jump in. In the Selective Color Adjustment Layer, we can go in and basically surgically uh, manipulate color in ways that HSL just cannot do it. Okay, and I'm gonna explain that right now. So let's go ahead and pop on a selective color adjustment layer. I'm gonna go down here to my menu and grab a selective color adjustment layer. Now this is not the selective color that you might've been used to, I don't know, 10 years ago where everyone was making things black and white with just a little pop of red for like a heart with love. and. It's not that, okay, selective color. This is targeting your colors selectively with the colors that are available within them. So what you're gonna see when you pop this on is we have a drop down of our reds, yellows, greens, cyans, blues, magentas, whites, neutrals, and blacks, okay? Now these are all the individual colors that could be present in your image, RGB, CMY. Let's just go ahead and choose the yellows for this because typically we're gonna be spending most of our time here between yellow and green. We might even go into red for this as well. So when we go into the yellows, what you're gonna see here is, is not very intuitive at all and it make, immediately makes you wanna run away. You're like, wait a second, I'm, I'm, I've got yellow selected. Why do we have cyan, magenta, and yellow here? Well, let me break down what this actually is uh, in a better way, okay? What this is, is if we go into, into each individual color, right now it's got magenta selected, we can go into that, in that color and we can add more percentage of cyan or less percentage of cyan, more percentage of magenta, less percentage of magenta, more percentage of yellow or less percentage of yellow. And then you're like, well, okay, that doesn't mean anything to me. What is a less percentage of yellow? What is less percentage of my magenta? Well, in order to really look at this, we have to look at the color wheel. So I've got a color wheel here that I'm gonna show you. With the selective color adjustment layer, you've got the color that you're working on, yellow, and then within that color, we have cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Now, what's happening here is that this cyan slider is not just more cyan or less cyan. It's either add cyan to that or not take away cyan, but add red because it's on the opposite side of the color wheel. So because cyan and red are opposites, you're either adding more cyan or you're adding red to that color yellow. Now let's look at magenta. You're either adding magenta by moving this over or reducing the amount of magenta that is in there by increasing the level of green that is there. Same thing for the yellows. Within the color yellow, you can make the yellows more strong by adding more percentage of the color yellow, or you can subdue that yellow by adding blue to it because that's what's on the opposite side of the color wheel. Actually, what these sliders should look like is probably more like something like this. I really wish Adobe would do something like this, but you know they don't update any of this stuff to make it convenient for us. So essentially, if we're in the color magenta and we move this slider to the right, we're gonna make that magenta more magenta. If we move it to the left, we're going to actually be reducing the amount of magenta that could be in that color by adding green to it. And then if we move up top, if we move this to the right, we're increasing the amount of cyan in the color magenta or reducing the amount of cyan by adding the color red. So once you get this kind of depicted in your head, it makes things a lot easier. There are two other toggles down here. We have relative and absolute. If you have this set to absolute color, it is going to basically apply this color over the image uh, in absolute values meaning it's going to really add a lot of cyan, really add a lot of red to that image. But if we change it to something called relative, what that's gonna do is it's going to restrict it to the relative color that is present within the image. Now, the way you work most naturally with this is going to have it be set to relative and we'll take a look at this in a second here. So let's go ahead and take this out. Let's do some practical application here. So we have all these foliage images that I wanna share with you here. 
Specifically, the one I want to start with is this one, because this one is not finished. It was taken directly out of Adobe Camera Raw and doesn't have very vibrant, lively green coloring in it. So we're going to start with this as our base, though, and, and kind of look at if we're going to be increasing the foliage in our image, what colors do we want to target? Well, for the most part, it's going to be our yellows, our greens and our reds. And we're really not even going to consider the other colors that are in that spectrum, unless, of course, we have a color cast. So how would I then make the yellows in this more vibrant? Well, I would typically go straight to the yellow slider because I'm in the color yellow and I want to make that more potent. I could bring this up to something like an extra, let's say 30. OK, so we go plus 30 percent yellow. And you can see as we increase this, the yellows get a lot more yellow, but we don't get that like um, pixelated kind of nasty increase in color that we would if we were to go over to the HSL adjustment layer, because that's always the, the defense. People are like, well, why would I use this as opposed to just going into the yellow and increasing the saturation of yellow? Look at how that operates. It doesn't operate the same as the selective color adjustment layer because it's saying it's basically an absolute thing. It's going absolute color of yellow. Give it as much saturation as you can. This is not increasing saturation. What the, what the selective color adjustment layer is doing is not increasing the saturation by taking the value of what saturation is and increasing it. It's adding more yellow to that color so that that yellow can be more vibrant. So what we'll do with this yellow to make it more yellow is we'll just come right into the yellow and we'll give it plus 30. That's ultimately going to make yellow a little bit more potent or powerful of a yellow. It's not actually increasing the saturation. It's just providing more yellow within the color yellow. OK, basically what it's doing is it's reducing the amount of blue that can be in that yellow that's holding it back from being its full potency. So now we have to think about the other two here. Now, here is the real key and the real kicker for separating your yellows from your greens. And it's a really important one. OK, we could just come in here and say, well, because we look at the color wheel, we want yellow to be more green. We should add more cyan because then yellow will become more green. And that's that's true. But what could happen is your yellows could become this toxic kind of green rather than a natural type of green. So what we will do here is we'll half this value. So we don't want to be quite as much as what we're giving to the primary color. So we'll half this value. We'll go negative 15 in the magenta, which will actually make it closer to the color green because that's what's opposite of magenta on the color wheel. But this is the kicker in the cyan area. We don't want to pull this towards cyan. We, we actually want to go the opposite direction with it and make it a little bit more red. And what that'll do is it'll actually give it a little bit of red so that that yellow becomes a little bit more yellow than green. Then when we are in our greens, we're going to go the opposite direction, which will make the greens more green. So we're essentially separating out the yellows from the greens by making them a, a, a more individual color of yellow rather than forcing them to be green. So to do that, we just go negative 15 in the cyan, which will actually make that a little bit more red. Now, if we turn this on and off, you see that our preview here, we have boosted the vibrance of our yellows. If I were to make this plus 15 in the cyan, watch these greens here on what happens. OK, you see how that gets like this toxic color of green. We don't want that. So we'll go negative 15 with that there for the cyan. Now, here's the other thing, too. I do want to add a little bit of black to this because what that'll do is it'll give some depth to that color and it'll take a little of the saturation off the top of it by giving it some depth. So we'll go 10 on the black there. It's basically just incorporating a little bit of darkness into that color so it's not quite as saturated. Now you might be thinking, why am I targeting yellow to become more green? Well, in actuality, when we are photographing foliage, we think that that is green. But the actual pixel values that you'll see there are probably more close to yellow. That's why if we take something like an HSL adjustment layer, which we'll is take HSL, we'll click on the target adjustment tool and we'll click somewhere like right here. That's yellow. Well, you're saying, well, no, that's green. That's got to be green. Well, because it looks green to me, but it's actually more yellow here than it is green. Now, it might be actually green here because it's a darker, stronger, more potent form of green. But what we see on our screen and the actual colors that are present there are two different things. So when we are looking at increasing our foliage in our images, we actually want to target yellow when we're looking at green. Now, we still can look at the color green as well. So let's go into green. Now here we have to say to ourselves, OK, we want more green in here. So but that's going to be our primary number, which is going to be that 30. So let's go negative 30 here. OK, so that will be we're taking magenta out of the green so we can make green more potent. OK, by adding more green to it. 
as a painter, when I would be working with colors, if I ever wanted to subdue a color straight out of the tube because it was too strong, I would mix its complement with it. And that would just taper it down a little bit, make it less saturated. So we're doing the opposite here. What we're doing is we're trying to remove the magenta from the green so that green can be its full potential. Now let's add some cyan to that because when we're looking at the color wheel, what are we trying to do here? We're trying to take green, this color green, and we're trying to make it a more vibrant form of green. So if we pull it this way, by going this way, we're taking cyan out of it. We're making that green more of a reddish color. That's not what we want. We actually want to go the opposite way and make that a plus 15 so we get that. So what I'm doing here by doing negative 30 and plus 15 or 30 and 15 is I'm giving the, the, the primary color green that we are targeting the most potency negative 30 so it's gonna be that 30 mark okay and then it's colors that i want to use analogously to pull it closer to that green that i want are going to get half of that color so negative 30 for the color itself plus 15 for the colors that we want to pull it in that direction and that will ultimately make our greens much more green and vibrant again we'll zero this out zero this out zero this out Okay, we want to add cyan to that 15, negative 30 to our green, and then 15 to our yellow. Now, what you'll see when we do this is that sometimes that green can get really saturated. If that's the case, we just take a little bit of black and put that black in there. By uh, That'll help round off that color so it's not so saturated. It gets a little bit of depth to it with the black. And that's always a good idea. Now let's go into the color red because in, in our foliage images, we will see that red is present there either with you know the ground or maybe uh, some tree trunks. So if we wanna make red more red, we need to go up to the cyan and remove the amount of cyan from it. Because remember this chart here, this chart, we wanna make red more red. Well, we'll pull this this way, okay? So we pull red this way. We're gonna give it negative 30 to get it away from cyan. Now when it comes to magenta, do we want more magenta in it or do we want more green in it? Well, if we pull it this way, it's going to go too close to that green. So let's actually make that a plus 15 for magenta. And then because yellow and red are close in proximity on the color wheel, I am going to take that to plus 15. And to round off that color and make it have a little bit more depth, let's add a little bit of black to it. So let's take a look at our before and after here. Here's before, here's after. You can see that these colors are much more bold. They're vibrant. They're lively. They're the colors that we would expect to see in the forest. So what I've done here is I've actually put this into an action for you. So I'm going to show that on a series of images here and show you how easy it is to boost this up and explain why it's working. Now in this action series, I have something called Foliage Pop Mild, which is what we just created, and Foliage Pop Strong. I'll explain those. I'm gonna press play on this action. Again, these actions are available to you. They will be available at the end of the video and also in the description below, okay? We got the Foliage Pop on there. It makes that foliage color just so much more bright and vibrant. And now this is an image straight out of Adobe Camera Raw, mind you. This, this is has not had much work done to it. Now, this image has had a lot of work done to it. If I press play on this one, you'll see that it adds a nice pop to that foliage color as well and gives it a lot of life. Now, the thing about this, though, is that this is based off of percentages. Again, we're talking about percentages. We're not talking about full pixel values worth of things. So it's going to manipulate the color in your image based off of the percentage of color that it sees there relative to the color that we're working with. It's probably the most natural way to work with color in our images than any other tool in Photoshop or Lightroom combined. And then if I go to this image here, uh, this image here, I'm gonna show you the second action that I have for you. So I'll go ahead and press play on this foliage pop strong. And what you're going to see here is it says this selective color adjustment layer has been pegged to the extreme. Use the opacity to increase or decrease the effect. This kind of gives you the, uh, the, the, the free will to move this opacity slider here so that our color can get really strong or not as strong. Okay, by just using the opacity adjustment here. Because what I've done here is I've taken these colors and I've just pegged them to their extremes so that the opacity slider can be what's used to tame them. Uh, again, on an image like this, press play on this. We are going to peg this one again. And then we're going to use opacity here to make sure that this is dialed in exactly where we want it to be. Kind of like turns the color lights on in a way. Okay, and then we'll go over to this one. We'll go ahead and press play on that. Foliage pop strong, okay? And then again, the extreme here. We move this up to get extreme color, move it down 
to reduce that color. So this becomes like a foliage color control just based on opacity because we already have all these settings set here. Obviously, if you just wanna use this regular mild foliage pop, this can be used almost on any image. And the great thing about it is you can just copy and even paste it onto other images and look at that. The foliage just looks so much better, so much cleaner, so much more robust, so much more like we actually saw it when we were on location. Look, the selective color adjustment layer can be intimidating at first, I get it. And just looking at a you know 10 to 15 minute video on selective color is not going to get you the results that you desire. What I would suggest is that you take this newfound knowledge that you have, hop into Photoshop on images that are in your portfolio and start experimenting with the selective color adjustment layer. Knowing color theory is going to help you a lot so have a color wheel accessible to you. As a matter of fact, I'll just go ahead and package up my color wheel and also put it in with the actions for you. So go ahead and click here if you'd like to have these actions in your workflow or in the description below. And as always, if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. I like to take difficult things in Photoshop and make them seemingly simple so that you can use them in your workflow today.